Welcome back, True Believers, to another Spider-Man PS4 related video, and today I'm going to be discussing why I believe Spider-Man PS4 is more important than Spider-Man Homecoming. And I've just been letting this news die down a little bit with this whole Zendaya is Mary Jane stuff and these other cast members and like blackwashing and casting for Spider-Man characters and all that stuff. It's like, for me personally, I like the change. It's cool. Because the only Mary Jane that we have actually seen in a movie is Kristen Dunst's Mary Jane in the Raimi trilogy. And then we were supposed to see, see Shailene Woodley in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But then her uh, scenes were cut from the movie. So we never knew what her Mary Jane would be like. But this seems more appropriate for Spider-Man as what I feel like. Just because of the fact... Um, it was stated by Hector Navarro from Superhero News. Go check them out. They're great. And also in normal like statistics, I believe it was like there's only like 30% to 40% of white people in Queens nowadays. So that whole majority of people of of people living in Queens makes sense of, you know, Mary Jane, a very influential character in the Marvel comics and now going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um will be multiracial or black or you know asian hispanic what have you um i think it's an appropriate fit and it's changed like you know liz allen in the spectacular spider-man went from being white to latino and no one complained no complaints and that is what they're doing in this movie um again both for liz allen and mary jane like um liz allen i believe is like port um half black half hispanic i'm assuming what um the person who's playing Liz Allen is, what the actress's name, who is playing Liz Allen in the movie. And then Zendaya, I think, will do a great job as Mary Jane. She seems like she fits the role perfectly, and her, like, spunkiness and, like, high, not hyper attitude, but, like, really um, upbeat attitude really fits the um, personality of Mary Jane, and I think it'll be great. But for Spider-Man PS4, there's differences between a movie and a game. When people say that superhero movies are just movies, don't listen to those people. They don't understand what we understand as fans of the character and as fans of the characters of multiple comic book universes. And again, like, you could say that The Dark Knight was just a movie. Or, um, even though this isn't a superhero movie, but Inception was just a movie. Those aren't movies. Those are, like, life-changing experiences. Like, um, when Heath Ledger, again, was cast as the Joker... Same thing, like, what the hell's going on? Why is some guy who's only been in, like, romantic comedies um, going to be the Joker? This is going to be a terrible fit. And basically, one of the best live-action portrayals of Joker ever, of all time. Um, for me personally, I think Mark Hamill beats him just because of how iconic his voice alone is. And even though he hasn't been a, you know, live-action Joker, his voice alone carries the entirety of that character. But for the game perspective of Spider-Man, the difference between a video game and a movie, a movie you can totally enjoy multiple times, seeing it multiple variations of, uh, you know, multiple amounts, um, but it's one experience. It's one experience that you repeat over and over and over again. You just, you relive that experience multiple times if you decide to actually watch the movie. And, you know, again, these movies are not just movies. These are life-changing, life-motivating, life-inspiring experiences like i saw spider-man one the sam raimi one in 2002 and i was um four years old and i barely remember seeing it but i remember um my mom telling me that i was blown away and i was basically glued to the screen and i was in awe and i remember that because of how you know spider-man is my favorite fictional character of all time and he you know still stays with me till this day as one of my favorite characters of fiction ever created and you know just how important he is as a character to all of us, to new people, new people joining this generation who are going to see Spider-Man for their first time watching this movie of Spider-Man Homecoming, and they're going to fall in love with this character all over again, but a different iteration of this character. And again, there are different iterations of characters from movies to games to TV shows to toys even, so it's a long array of vast possibilities ranging from interactivity and viewability. And, of course, viewability being for the movies of Spider-Man Homecoming, which is a, I think is going to be um, probably better than Spider-Man 2. It's a huge statement, but we have all the factors of a great movie. We have a great director um, who has stated this is going to be a high school movie, which <clears throat> Ultimate Spider-Man, anybody 
who is out there who is a comic book fan. That's basically what that is, or Spectacular Spider-Man, the movie, which I made a video about that. You can go check it out. Um, we're going to have a younger cast, which is going to appeal to younger audiences to go see this character. Um, it's the first Spider-Man movie ever in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is history in the making, people. This movie, in the first, in one of the first movies to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that has Spider-Man in it, his own standalone movie in the MCU. Um, yes, that's what we've been dreaming of ever since that the Avengers was made. So it's happening. Um, I'm gonna faint when I see it, so I'm gonna love it. Um, and yeah, great cast, great story, great villain choice is plural because there's like more than one villain. And I think it's going to be a great movie to watch. Now, with all of that in mind, that's a movie that you can only watch once, and you can relive it by watching it over and over again if you love movies. Me, I love feeling like I am that character. I can't feel like what's happening in the movie because what is happening in the movie is happening to Peter and in that um, one-line story that you can't choose what to do. In Spider-Man PS4... You're going to be able to play as the character that you've been wanting to play ever since you were a little kid, fully grown up, fully experienced, fully knowing how to be a great hero to save New York City. It's going to be in a next-gen console, an exclusive for a next-gen console, so all of your possibilities, all your fantasies, all your fan fictions of what Spider-Man could possibly do acrobatic-wise and, like, stylistic-wise and, like, what you've been wanting Spider-Man to do in, like, um, you know, stylistic fashion, we'll probably be able to do that in the game, and again... Movies are for watching, games are for playing. You can play this game forever if you want to. Once this game comes out, you'll have infinite amount of time to play this game and feel like you are this character that can save people, help people, and make a difference in the world. And again, Spider-Man in Homecoming, he's just a teenager. He's still learning how to be Spider-Man. But in Spider-Man PS4, he is Spider-Man, which excites me. It's cool seeing a young Spider-Man, but I think the newer older, more experienced, more vast knowledge Spider-Man slash Peter Parker who's really, you know, wiser than the younger, rambunctious kid and knows more how to save people and has probably had some past traumatic experiences happen to him, <coughs> Gwen Stacy. So, if we see that in the game, it would be a, a experience for a lifetime. Like, again, Batman Arkham Knight, the game, that story is so good that I think it out, it beats like, The Dark Knight Returns and The Killing Joke and the Under the Red Hood, like, all those stories, in my opinion. And I think Spider-Man PS4 will do the same, and it will lay out the groundwork for future movies to come. Like, again, Dawn of Justice had the Arkham Batman's combat influenced in Ben Affleck's Batman. So think about that if you, we see Spider-Man PS4 and we see something happen in that game, when it, whether it's the combat or the way he swings, the way he, you know, cracks jokes. If they're going to take that and they're probably going to input it in the next Spider-Man movie in the MCU, I think it will be a great fit. And that is all I have today for this video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, True Believers. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.